Okay, first I would like to introduce myself. My name is Yantisa Akhadi. If that name is hard to pronounce, you can call me Ian. That's easier. I'm from the I'm from HOT. That uh, stands for Humanitarian Open Street Map Team. It's a non-profit organization based in DC. Uh, I will present now about the state of Open Street Map data in Asia because possibly uh, some of you might be interested in using the open map data and also like analyzing the data or use the data for your own purposes uh, but first how many of you have heard about open street map please raise your hand oh that's lots of you already heard about it so but some of you i see that you did not raise your hand so i'll give you crash course on open street map so basically, OpenStreetMap is the project that creates and distributes free geographic data for the world. What's the definition of free? That consists of free to share, meaning that you can share the data, you can download the whole planet data of OpenStreetMap, and you can copy that among your friends. And you, you would not get sued, and no one would call you uh, piracy because uh, you're doing some kind of piracy. And it's free to adapt. You can translate OpenStreetMap in your own language, even translate OpenStreetMap in your own traditional language. That's free to do that. And it's free to create, meaning that you can create a database based on OpenStreetMap. For example, I would like to create a database of all the hospitals in the world simply by downloading OpenStreetMap data. And you filter the data, and you only took the hospital data or the clinic data, then yes, you can do that. And you are free to do that. As long as you attribute that you get the data from OpenStreetMap, because initially when Apple Maps uh, launching their uh, service, they did not acknowledge that some of the map data coming from OSM. So we need to remind Apple, and then such, and then uh, in the next couple of weeks later, they put the attribution that some of the data, not all of them, is also coming from OpenStreetMap. And the license need to be shared alike, so you cannot have the database, and then you uh, relaunching the, your database in the proprietary format. So it needs to be also uh, keep in open. And you need to keep open, as I just mentioned, that you need uh, to enable people to uh, access the database. So uh, this is all actually the simplification of open database license, which is the license that currently used by OpenStreetMap. Now the platform is look uh, really similar with the other mapping platform, as you can see here we can see that there are uh, routes uh, visualization and you can see like what's the bicycle route for this uh, track for example this is from one of uh, this is in Jakarta from Mampang that's an area to University of Indonesia and you can also choose the map layers you can choose that you only focus on transportation or you want to focus on humanitarian layer which related to disaster and then the platform, what is make it, makes uh, OpenStreetMap different with other uh, commercial mapping platform is that you really see the data. That the data, the raw data, you can see it, you can play with it. It is basically an XML document, so you can uh, analyze with your favorite tools, and you can host your own tile server. So there is no limitation in accessing OpenStreetMap platform. The only limitation, if you if you got the warning, then you can. The alternative is that you build your own tile server, meaning that you host all of the tile server from your own machine. And you can do that. The size is not that big, depends on the array that you want to serve. For example, for Indonesia, this file size is around 200 megabytes. That's the compressed format. If you want the actual XML, then that will be a bit uh, bigger, more than 4 gigabytes for Indonesia and then user can browse your site. So basically, if you have your own tile server, you can render the maps as you like. You don't like C to look blue, then you can make the C look green, or you, you can make C color into red or something, whichever color that you prefer. And you can uh, emphasize on certain uh, visualization, and you can uh, like hide the other visualization as well. So it really gives you uh, the freedom to, do, uh, to play with it. And the platform itself, uh, this is all the tile cache server of uh, OpenStreetMap. As you can see, in Asia, there are three being served by the National Center for High Performance Computing in Taiwan. And then there's Yandex, that's uh, Google's uh, uh, competitor, the biggest competitor in Russia. They're even bigger than Google, actually. And then there's also Delta Telecom at, at Azerbaijan. 
So even if you like to, you can host your own tile cache server and put it part of the network. Uh, so it's just regular server. You don't need like a really high end server. But what you really need is a good connect uh, internet connection because traffic in tile server is around 200 terabyte per month, which might be smaller for some of you. And what's uh, the misconception that often happen in OpenStreetMap is that people often asking me, so what is the API? How can I get the API? You don't get the API unless you're building the editor. So the API in OpenStreetMap only use if you developing map editing software, meaning that you want to add data into OpenStreetMap. If you simply to want to visualize the data, if you want simply to uh, look at the map, you can use uh, open layer of leaflet. That's the uh, popular JavaScript library. So basically, like this is all the architecture. This is this is uh, open platform. This is open data. You can look at the platform. You can fork the platform and build your own OpenStreetMap server. That's really straightforward and quite easy to do that. My experience, if you want to build tiles, uh, tile server for the OpenStreetMap, it just took less than three to four hours. And then you have the, your own tile server. So this is basically the architecture. Uh, if you want to know more about this, I'll give you the link by the end of the presentation. You can also get the link for this slide later uh, in the end of the presentation. So how about the OpenStreetMap data? So uh, it didn't look really clear. So basically, like the whole planet data is only 56 gigabytes. I just update these slides like this week. And this is really updated. So by you downloading this 56 gigabyte, you get the whole planet XML data. This is the URL if you are interested to download the data and you want to analyze it. And then every week the data gets updated. Like this weekly change set, uh, the size is 1.7. So meaning that next week probably it will be growing into that size. This one is the compressed version, the PBF format. PBF is really common at OpenStreetMap. PBF is proto buffer format. Not that you need to know that, but uh, it, uh, it really can compress the data. And this is the overview of the OpenStreetMap data for Asia. Like you can download country level data and you can also download city level data. So if you're only interested to Singapore, then you can simply download Singapore. You, you're not necessarily need to download the whole 56 gigabyte. So uh, you can, uh, I already test this and you can check like Singapore and then you can, you can download only the Singapore data in PBF, in shape file or other format that might suit to your need. And then the next question is how's the structure of the data? Basically, there are only three types of OSM data. The first time, the first one is node. So it's basically point. So like point of cafe, point of a restaurant, point of a hospital. So we call that as a node. So every atom of a node, or like every node data looks like this. They, they have an ID, they have the lat and longitude. That's quite common. They have the version, meaning that if people make mistakes in OpenStreetMap, they can refer to the previous version. And that's what we did as well. If there's people doing map vandalism, meaning that they're just deleting data in OpenStreetMap, we simply refer that uh, data into the previous version and it will uh, come back up. And then the chain set, and then who's the user doing the editing, and what's the user ID, and this time step, time stamp when uh, the data is being added to the database. The second type of the data is ways. So ways is actually series of nodes. So there are several, ND is actually node. So there are uh, points, collection of points that, so from this collection of points, it form a line. So that's basically ways. And ways can be divided into open way, close way, and area. So area is like an area for basketball field or a football field, for example. But basically it also have all the information and like there is all, there is always a pair of key and value. Like also this one is highway, and the type of the highway is residential, meaning that is in the residential area. And then we can add another uh, key and tag key and value uh, pair. The third one is a relation. Relation is basically like we use this for boundary, for admin admin boundary, for uh, to be specific. So for example, we can see that. Uh, Area A and area B is a neighbor area, and then there's another area, the smaller, which is part of the area A, that is area C. But I won't go into the detail. And then this one here is 
uh, the overview for the open street map database statistic currently we have this is for the worldwide stat we have 3.5 billion of nodes and we have around 200 uh, probably around 300 million of ways so there is plenty of data to be played with and also there's a relation so in terms of number still nodes is like uh, the most common because it's easy to just adding points instead of like uh, build uh, right uh, drawing a building for example you just type that this building is for example iron mall but it's a bit uh, more challenging if you want to draw the mall itself so goes into the core of the my presentation that is uh, what how about the condition for data in asia so i did a small research and this is the result it is ex uh, interesting i only took like uh, 10 uh, biggest data available for asia and i add singapore as well singapore is uh, for that if we rank all of the open street map data for asia so singapore is on the rank 29th with the size of the data is only 13 megabytes 13 megabytes is for the whole country so for example before i come to singapore I download OpenStreetMap data for Singapore, only 13 megabytes, and I can walk around Singapore without uh, afraid of getting lost because I already have the whole country map in my smartphone, and it's pretty convenient to do that. I'll show you the application later. So this shows a bit of interesting uh, points. For example, like China, despite like the size of the data, but because they have a really large area only second to Russia but the building is only 500,000 comparing to other we see that the trend is okay this is uh, 116 600 this, this is a bit big but the area is also wide while the population is quite considerably medium and then goes to South Korea it's still 100,000 scale but what happened here what's interesting is there are three countries that stand out uh, quite big despite of the size of the data and despite the size of the population and area as well. That is Indonesia, Philippines and Nepal. While Russia, because uh, although the building is 10 million but consists of the area is 12 million. The area is, I only consider the area for those uh, Russia that exists in Asia because there's also Russian area which part of the Europe but this one is only for Asia. And then, what is the explanation of why there are three countries which have a really high number? The short question is because these three countries having disaster and at the same time hot doing lots of projects for disaster management in that area. In terms of we map an area to help that area for uh, emergency response because during emergency a good map is really useful if you want to help people then you need to have a good map so that you know how to distribute your logistic you know how to reach an area and give assistance to that area now specifically for Indonesia because I come from Indonesia and I really understand uh, where this number come from uh, the 5 million the 5.6 million is because in 2011 uh, we have a project funded by the Australian government in partnership with the Indonesian government that is to develop uh, a software called Inasafe. So Inasafe is basically a software which receives input in terms of hazard, for example floods, if you watch uh, Peta Bencana presentation previously. So basically it looks like, for example, floods in Jakarta. If there's happened flood in Jakarta, how many buildings, how many roads, and how many population will be affected by that particular uh, disaster and then Inasif will give you the result of uh, how many building or how many kilometers of road how many people will be impacted in in and result the result is in form of maps uh, reports or uh, action points so because the challenges when developing the software is we don't have a good data it's easy to get the hazard data from national disaster management agency but how you can get like road data and building data in a short amount of time. Population data is easy because every time there's, peop, uh, there's a citizen get, deliver birth or uh, death, then they need to report that to, the, to get the birth certificate or to get the death certificate. So it's quite easy to track the population in a certain area, but it's hard to get the building and roads data because they're quite dynamic. So in terms to achieve that, in 2011 up until this year or this this is still ongoing project 
we recruit a trainer and we have deliver uh, to 128 training in 17 province there are 34 province in Indonesia so about half of it uh, we already covered and we already train more than 3,000 participants all over Indonesia and we also did uh, this is also the story on how we built the community so we need to translate like all the learning material we need to adapt to the local context even in one of our project with partnership with Wikimedia Indonesia which we, is we also develop a specific guideline and we using the local icon uh, so that people would, can relate and they can easily learn uh, the material and we also develop QGIS and INASE for disaster management all of our training materials the license is public domain meaning that you can download you can adapt you can sell the training material that's up to you and we also uh, record and publish uh, we create tons of uh, YouTube videos so that people can easily learn OpenStreetMap now it's still in Indonesian but we will provide the subtitle in English as well so that more people can learn about it and we also develop several tools this is the InnaSafe tool that I just mentioned earlier so that using InnaSafe you can see the breakdown of the building affected by floods so if same same floods in 2007 happen now in Jakarta the impact might be like for example there will be like four apartment inundated 100 building inundated and then how many clinics how many college how many uh, hospital will be affected and it's also important to build the community com community through social media there are several social media that we maintain to give uh, how to's and guides the q and a outreach and also for the tutorial this is another uh, how the at least more than one million data being added is through the citywide mapping currently we have citywide mapping in Surabaya and Jakarta this is also partnering with the MIT through Peta Bencana so Peta Bencana is part of the urban risk lab from the MIT so we map the whole city of Surabaya and currently we are mapping Jakarta how we do this uh, we do this by import existing open data sets because it is open database license the license need to be compatible and then we also do remote mapping through digital aerial imagery uh, all of our aerial imagery is actually donated by Bing by Microsoft Bing and we also do the detailed attribute information collection on the ground we deploy at for, for Surabaya we deploy 15 data sur, uh, data entry and in Jakarta we deploy 20 and this is type of the data that we collected transportation sport facility government and this is the growth or explosion of the data when we do the collection this is in terms of road and this is a beyond data preparedness we believe that the data can be used in various other use because this is open data when we collect this for disaster management does not mean that agriculture cannot use the data that's how we track urban farming in northern part of Jakarta and this is in Kalimantan in Borneo where we have collaboration with Wikimedia uh, in partnering with uh, in an open data project and surely this data can be used for navigation if you have iPhone or you have Android smartphone then you can download this maps.me which you can easily download a country data and use it for traveling so whenever you go you can uh, you don't you don't need internet connection as far as you get the GPS then you can uh, navigate using this open street map and maps.me is not the only application there are other application this is Osman this is also an Android but it have more feature but if you have one more feature then you you might need to pay at certain level this is quick comparison of uh, how OSM versus other mapping platform so OSM Google map and this one is here map I'm look I'm taking a snapshot of the Singapore Science Center so as you can see on the left uh, OSM can provide more detailed level it depends on the community actually depend on the volunteer that mapping an area the more volunteer that map an area the more detailed map that we can see and then goes to other place this is New Delhi similar in terms of in OSM Google map and here map and this and then this is Vietnam is in Hanoi you can see also that uh, OSM also focused on the building footprint that is uh, quite detailed and this is one of our project in Jakarta where we also map small kiosks that owned by the community 
the small kiosk is something that's rarely mapped by other mapping platform because yeah we, we quite understand the reason of why they more interested in the big uh, businesses and this is the reference you can download my slide at this link above and if you have any question if we don't have time i think i already spent it oh really <laughs> i thought i do troubleshooting and then it spends a lot of time you can also uh, ask question through email or to twitter and all the reference all the link uh, is quite valuable if you want to learn more about it thank you very much for your time yes Mm -hmm. There were no US. Uh, yeah, because this one is focused on Asia. Mm -hmm. But actually, there is also quite large data from US. Yeah. Is there any more questions? Yes. So, uh, in this last slide, well, where you compare the map, mm -hmm. you can go down the street map, you Yes. Uh, well, they can steal the data from one still. Take it from the street map. Take it. Possibly, yeah. So, like, uh, there's there's a cases where two things happen. Like, there's there's a case where OpenStreetMap editor or person, OpenStreetMap user, took data from Google Map, <laughs> which is not allowed. And then there's also case where uh, Google also open Google Map Maker project, but yeah, sometimes like the user also take the data from OpenStreetMap. So. But both cases, actually, it's not allowed to do that because the license is incompatible. I mean, yeah. Uh, it's true, then. <coughs> yes. But yeah, so we hear a couple of cases regarding that. But this one is only visualization of uh, comparing. Yeah, they could, but only if they make it again. Yeah, yeah. Although, yeah, uh, we still, uh, I mean, the way of the data collected is also different. Like in OpenStreetMap data collected by volunteer, while well, Google Map yeah, yeah, might. Uh, Saw us uh, by the but data. That would be really easy to just, you know, fill the gaps in the maps using your data. And, uh, yeah, that's an ideal world if everyone works together and share them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay. No question? Yes. So I was wondering, uh, 